Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're continuing our exercises to get good at Blender. This time we're on to hard surface modeling and trying to understand some of the complexities of that. And at the end of this session, you'll have an understanding of things like the subsurface modifier and the shading options within Blender for more low poly work. Do remember to check the description for playlists. You can find lots of these courses on my channel under the playlist sections where I've tried to organize them. You can also look at my website, which has some of these courses in order and you can find links to good beginner courses and other things like that there. Okay, so as usual, I'll show you the object, then you have a go at creating it. So here is the first object. Now, eventually we want it to look like this, but I thought I'd leave this one on here in case you weren't sure about how to get to this stage. Now, two hints here. The first one is the bevel tool, and the second one is that I haven't used any extra modifiers. So have a go at that. Okay, so hopefully a fairly straightforward one for you. I'll grab both of these in the Y axis and move them across to the side. Move my cursor to the center with Shift C and Shift A to add a UV sphere. G, Z1 to move it above the surface. Not that that makes much difference in this case. And into edit mode with tab, or you can press the options up here. I'll zoom in a bit closer with period key on the numpad and two to go to edge mode, or you can press edge mode up here. Alt, left click on one of the lines to select the edge loop and another one down here. Actually, those aren't the right lines. I'll choose that one and that one instead. I think that's correct. Not quite, it's that one. Almost there anyway. Control B to bevel. So we create a bevel. And the good thing about the bevel is it will edge slide, so it will keep the shape of your UV sphere. So somewhere around there for size. So I'm just moving my mouse left and right at the moment. And I've left click so I can come to my bevel controls just over here and up the segments if I want. So I will put it up to two. I'll grab the inside edge loop, Alt left click and Shift Alt left click. Now if I scale these in now, they'll scale towards each other and you can see that's going downwards into each other. So I'll undo that. I need to select individual origins and then if I scale now, they scale inwards the way I want them to. Now we can actually control B here as well and increase the bevel. I'll take off the extra loop cut there to somewhere around there. And I think I need to scale them in a bit more as well. Okay, so that's fairly straightforward, but how do we get it looking all smooth like this? Now, if I click on this, you can see it's exactly the same topology, so I haven't added any sort of subdivision surface modifier, which we'll talk about later. But if I shade smooth on this, right click, shade smooth, it looks all blobby. What you'll need to do is come down to the object data properties, just here. And there is under normals, just there, we've got an auto smooth option. And straight away, that does a great job. It thinks about the angle of your shapes and then will make them sharp dependent on this angle. So if I put this right up, it goes back to where it was without the auto smooth. And when the angle comes into play and the default is 30, you can see that it sharpens the edges up. Now this is a nice useful tool to keep your polygons low but still have a nice smooth shade with sharp edges. Okay, so onto the second object. Now I've made this in the way that you can just copy the first one and adapt it, and that will be the theme throughout. So see how you get on with that. Okay, so I'll grab this in the Y axis and just move it across slightly. I'll duplicate this one, so Shift D and then grab it in the X axis across to there. Let's go to edit mode and we want to select the top faces. So let's go to face mode with three, Make sure you haven't got any faces selected. Can you see I've got those faces selected still, so watch out for that. Alt A to clear all your selections, Alt A. And then C to circle select is probably the easiest way. So I can just grab those like that. In fact, I think there was one more layer. So I can actually press Control plus on my numpad and that will grow my selection. Now I can extrude this downwards, E to extrude and in the Z axis, just pull it downwards slightly, maybe somewhere like that. I can use the inset to inset the shape, E to extrude upwards, and we've got a similar shape to over here. Then I can press Control R for loop cuts, just the one loop cut to start with, in the middle there, so double left click, Control B to bevel, up the wheel to add an extra section, and then with edge mode selected, two on my keyboard, Alt left click, and scale that in. I can then bevel this again, take off that extra edge loop there, somewhere around there and maybe scale it in a bit more so it's similar to the other one. Okay, so nothing too complicated, hopefully. Let's try the next one. Okay, so here's the next one. Your tip for this is proportional editing. So have a go at that. 
Okay, so I'll once again, G then Y and move it across out of the way. Grab the first one, Shift D and in the X axis, put it across to the other one. Into edit mode, into face mode, Alt A to deselect all because those were still selected. And I'll press full stop with that face selected to move in on these faces. C to circle select. I think I've talked about circle select before, haven't I? So left click will select, middle click will deselect. So I'll just select those again and right click to come out of circle selection. So I want to extrude that and grab in the Z axis and inset this and extrude it upwards. Now I've done that a slightly different way. I could have done the bevel there. It doesn't make too much difference in this case. The bevel will keep the topology in the same place, but it shows that there's several different ways of doing each of these techniques. So if I press one on my keyboard to go to vertex mode and press the middle vertex and then come up to my proportional edit tool, I can then press G then Z, use my middle mouse button to change the influence. I'll press Z again, it didn't seem to constrain to the Z that time. And then find the right distance with my wheel and pull it down. Now it's not doing quite what I want. So let's right click to undo that and change the type of curve. A sphere might help, so G then Z, and that looks good. So just a reminder about the proportional editing, which is the tool up here, and O is the shortcut. I'll turn it off now so I don't get confused. And let's move on to the next object. And what I want you to look at is the bit here. Now I'm introducing a add-on here, which is loop tools. If you don't know about that, I'll put a link in the description and a card in the corner now to a video that I've done about that. But it will really help you tremendously with your hard surface modeling. So don't be afraid to enable the add-on. If you need a reminder from that video, it's edit preferences, add-ons, type in loop, and there is loop tools. Just tick that to make sure it's enabled. In order to find it, you go into edit mode and right click and there's your loop tool options. The one you'll want to use is the circle one. Now don't panic too much if you're not sure how to do it. Just have a go and see what sort of problems you're going to come up against. And that will help you when I start explaining it when I do it. So have a go at that. Okay, let's grab this and move it across to the side. G then Y. And I think we use this one. So Shift D, X and pull that over. Okay, so if I go into edit mode now, I want to create a circle in here somehow. The easiest way to do that is to go to face mode and grab these four faces. Now there's two options here. I can extrude and scale, for example, and then I can start moving these vertices into position. Now, first of all, I want to explain that extrude and scale, can you see how it's indented slightly? So I've extruded, then scaled. I'm going to undo that. If I inset, it follows, if I come around to the side here, the shape of the sphere. So that's why it's important to think about the tools and their uses. And the inset tool does what's called an edge slide as such. So for example, if I grab this vertex here and press GG to edge slide. Oh, I'm still in proportional edit. I thought I'd turn that off. GG to ed edge slide. You can see that it roughly keeps the shape. Obviously, it's going to distort the shape slightly. And that's what it's doing over here. It's doing a kind of edge slide. It's keeping the shape of the model as much as it can with the inset tool. But if I undo this once again, just to prove a point, E to extrude and scale in, you can see that it digs into the object. It's not respecting the sphere's shape. So I'll undo that, inset and come in just a touch like there. Now we could go around and select these and then scale them in to create our circle. And that's not done a bad job, but then we have to grab them and pull them out slightly here in the X axis. And we've managed to create a rough circle. That's okay. If we had several points, that would become a bit more complicated. Instead of that, we have a great option. If I select that edge loop again with Alt left click and just going around selecting each edge. Now I can right click, loop tools, circle, and it makes a circle for you. So right click up to loop tools and circle. So you can imagine why I want you to enable that add-on. Now let's go to face mode again, select these faces and extrude them out to about there. Now there's a bit of smoothness in here, so I can select that edge loop there and control B and bevel. Now with the bevel, be careful not to overlap the other vertices. So you can see there, I'm going beyond the vertices. Just make sure you haven't done that. 
You can add another edge loop if you like, but for now I'm keeping mine fairly low poly, so about there is fine. Now you can see that our shade smooth isn't quite working. So what we need to do is up the angle until we start losing those hard edges. It does look a bit strange though, so this is a case where the topology is not quite doing it for us. And there's a fine balance, especially when you're working on games. You're trying to find as low a poly as possible, but keeping that sort of fidelity, or in other words, trying to get as close as you can to the shape without adding too much. So it doesn't look bad from a distance here, we can get away with it, but close in, it doesn't look great. Okay, so this is where we need to start adding more topology and maybe thinking about the subdivision surface modifier. So let's look at the next one. Now this has a subdivision surface modifier added to it. I'd like you to have a go at that. Try as practice creating a hole here and don't panic if your subdivision surface modifier doesn't look like mine. There's a bit of explanation to do, but see how you get on. Okay, so let's move that across, grab on the Y axis and move it that way. And let's duplicate this one, Shift D, grab X and move it over. So as practice, we made a little hole into edit mode, Alt A to deselect all, selecting our faces. So three to select face mode and select our faces. I'll press full stop to zoom in on those. I to inset, remember to use the inset, and then right click, loop tools, circle. And this time we're extruding inwards, so E to extrude and pull it inwards. And you may have done some practice on this side, but we can cheat a bit, bring out my other add-on that I love so much, auto mirror. So I'm going to auto mirror in the X axis, and I've got it on negative, so it went from the negative X to the positive. And let's think about the subdivision surface modifier now. So across to the modifier properties, I'll just minimize the mirror for the moment. It's still there, of course, and add subdivision surface. Now let's compare the two. This one looks a bit bloated and this one looks nice and sharp and crisp. So I'll give you a basic introduction to this. The reason is that we haven't got any supporting loops. So if I go into edit mode, you can see in here, if we look right at the corner here, I'll zoom in a bit for that. What the subdivision surface modifier does, it smooths things out very cleverly. It one subdivides it, but also smooths it. So back to object mode quickly and look at wireframe and you can kind of see what it's doing. It's dividing every face into four to start off with, but it's also smoothing the vertex so that they flow together. So back into solid mode. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to turn off the auto smooth because generally with the subdivision surface modifier, you don't really use that. Instead, you use what are called supporting loops. So back into edit mode and back to my subdivision surface modifier. It's worth pointing out that if you choose simple, it keeps its shape, but it does still add that subdivision. So it's subdividing every face into four. Now it's worth also pointing out that the render is actually up to two, whereas the viewport is one. The reason they do that is because if you subdivide every face twice you are adding 16 faces to every one. So it's adding a lot of topology. So they have a rendered mode and a viewport mode to be able to speed up your viewport. I'm going to put it back to Catmull Clark, which is the smooth version, and show you how we can create these sharp edges. So we'll start with the pointy out bit here. If I add a loop cut, so Control R, and then straight away, as soon as I left click, you can see that it changed the topology. So I'll undo that. Control R and left click so you can see that again. And the more I push it towards the edge, the sharper that edge becomes. That's why they're called supporting edge loops, sometimes called proximity loops as well. So the proximity to each other influences the sharpness. So I'll put one this side and you can see already if I go to solid mode that that's helping a lot. And if I put my viewport up even more, you can see it really smooths it out nicely. So there's the difference between the subdivisions there. I might leave it on two actually because I think that looks a bit better. And lastly, let's select these faces here and inset them in again. Can you see the change it makes to our edge? If I go back into solid mode, it makes it nice and sharp now. So basically having a loop cut either side of your edge will sharpen up edges. I'll do the same here. So control R and push this up. And can you see it makes that a bit sharper back into solid mode there and then one the other side, control R, and move that out a bit, and you can see it's starting to sharpen it up. What would be better actually, 
is if we go in and use a bevel. So control B to bevel and use the wheel to create the original in a sense. So we've got now two supporting edges around our original edge and set it there back into solid mode and you can see that nice sharp line. So have a quick go at doing that with the other pieces. Okay, so just a quick note. Firstly, some of you might be saying, well, why aren't we using the bevel modifier? Well, we will come onto that in a later date, but I want people to understand what's happening with the bevel tool and how it's sharpening the edges. But yes, going around each of these edges and beveling them is quite a long drawn out process and one that can certainly be automated. Another problem you may have come across is within here. So if I go to edit mode again, it's okay with this outside edge, so we can control B on that and smooth it out nicely. But how do we select these inside edges? Well, obviously we can go to wireframe and try and select them from there. That's a bit awkward though, isn't it? Is it's all a bit messy? Perhaps X-ray mode with Alt Z. That's not too bad actually, that's probably a better way of doing it and I can go in and select these edges. But we've also got an option if I turn off X-ray mode, which says on cage. So if I press this, you can see that it puts our edges on top of the model. It does distort them slightly and it can be a little bit weird working in this mode. So do be careful of this. It may be better in X-ray mode, but now I can bevel this and see it really easily. But you can see the distance between my bevel looks a tiny bit odd. I'll set it there anyway and go back to the normal mode and you can see the bevel. But if I click between the two, you can see that it does change where the edges are displayed and that can be very confusing, especially for beginners. So don't worry too much about that, but you can have a play with it and try and get used to it. Okay, so there's plenty more to talk about here with the subdivision surface modifier and other techniques for creating hard surface shapes. What I want you to have a go at is an extra one here. So just creating a few holes and edge loops and things you can copy what I've done or try and create something that's interesting and unusual, maybe a funny sort of spaceship or something like that. The more you use the subdivision surface modifier and try and get those edge loops working with things like the bevels, the more you'll come across the problems which I'll talk about in the next few episodes. When using the subdivision surface modifier, it's quite important to have a basic understanding of topology and how it affects things in order to make it work in the most optimal way. Anyway, hopefully you're finding this helpful. If you want to share your results, you can put a link in the comments below or you can get across to the Discord server and chat to me there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.